We've created a GitHub account, and now we'd like to create our first repository. On this page, once you go to github.com, we've actually just created this GitHub account, and you can even see that we've been welcomed to GitHub. So this homepage is not normally what you would see, but to begin to create a repository, you can either click start a project in this instance, or like you would normally do, you could go up to this plus button in the top right corner, click create new and click new repository. Once you do this, you're creating a new repository. The repository name should be specific to your project and describing in a very short words of what you're about to do. In this instance, it will be a Hello World project. So let's call it Hello World. And the, the name can't contain spaces, correct? Well, let's check it out. So it can, and it, well, what it's going to do then is put a dash in it for us, right? And Correct. It'll be created as hello dash world. So I like it better without the space in there. So hello world. Camel cased. And you can put a description in. And this is a description describing this. So let's do hello, let's call it get workflow with hello world. Then it's asking if you want a public or private repository. If you only have the free GitHub account, you cannot select private without paying. Public means that anyone can see it and anyone can commit to it. Private means that only you can see it and other people that you have um, sent invites to can actually contribute to it. Then you have this option to initialize this repository with a readme. A readme is essentially a text file that describes your project. GitHub has an actual very cool viewer when your project contains a readme. It will actually parse the markdown in it and display it as essentially a home page in your repository. So let's click initialize this repository with a readme in this instance. You don't necessarily need to do that. Then we have two options. We have an add a git ignore and add a license. A git ignore is essentially a file that will ignore certain files in your git project. A license is open source license, whether you want an MIT license, Apache license, and such as. It even has a plus button that will take you to another site to actually show you the differences between the licenses and what you might actually want to choose. In this instance, we're going to leave the license blank. Okay. And so let's focus on Git Ignore for a moment. Um, there are pre-built Git Ignores for different kinds of projects. And we're going to be using Swift for iOS development. And there is a Swift Git Ignore. And actually, let's let's select that and then we'll take a look at what's in the Git Ignore after we create the repository. With all of these settings actually set now, we can now click the Create Repository and it will actually have created a repository on GitHub for us. With that, we have two files already inside of our GitHub project, a .gitignore and a readme.md. MD stands for Markdown. And you can even see that this text here is actually what resides currently inside the readme. If we can navigate back, let's look at the .gitignore. Like I said earlier, the gitignore actually tells Git which files to ignore inside the project. And when we selected Swift, it came with a giant list of files that is telling Git to ignore. These files are mostly inclusive, but it is actually missing a very big one, important one that we should add now. Dale, how would I go about modifying this file while in GitHub? So there's a pencil, and the pencil implies that we can edit it. And if you hover as you are now, you can see edit this file. And... Um, the one that we're missing is that I like to remove is the DS store file. And before we add it, I'm going to go down here to the finder, applications, utilities, and I'm going to get my terminal out here in my bar. So if, if we open up the terminal and we do like an ls-al, um, here is a .ds underscore store file. And that's information that is about what's in the directory. It's kind of a thing that Mac OS uses to maintain sort of metadata about the files. And the reason we don't include it in Git is it's changing potentially all the time. And it really isn't necessary for our project. So rather than having it um, constantly requiring a commit, 
um, we want to just leave it out of the files that are managed. Right. And depending on actually the user that is contributing to your GitHub repository, their DS store might actually be different than yours. So we don't quite want to keep track of that. So let's go back to github.com with our editing state up for our dot get ignore. Let's just go down to other, for example, click a new line. Now we're on line 23 and let's add dot DS store. It has to be exactly capitalized, just like you would see it in the terminal. So DS and the capital store and the underscore all needs to be the exact same as you would see in the terminal, for example. So I just want to restate again, everything listed here in get ignore are files and directories that git is going to ignore. So once we've made all the changes we want to this file, let's navigate to the bottom of the page. Committing changes means basically a save of this file. It even gives us text that we can use, update get ignore. Let's leave that text there, meaning that's going to essentially say update get ignore, and let's add an additional description. Let's say added dot ds store to the dot get ignore. And then we're gonna commit directly to the master and let's click commit changes. Once we have done that, this file has essentially been saved onto GitHub. Now with the added dot ds store, if we navigate back, navigate back to get ignore, you'll still see it's still residing there. That's exactly what we want. So the reason we created this repository is as a starting point for a project that we want to create on our local computer. And so this is the starting point for something that we're going to, what, what's the word we use to when we get a copy of this? Clone. We're going to clone this to our local computer and then we're going to use it as a starting point for a new Xcode project. 